Minnesota was able to get an 81 to 70 win over Rutgers. Let's take a look at some of the film and how they did it. Pharrell Payne had a career high 21 points and added 11 rebounds with it. Rutgers has had one of the best interior defenses in the country, but Minnesota was able to shoot 13 for 20 at the rim, highlighted by Pharrell Payne. So this first play that we're going to look at is going to eventually end up um, in Chicago action. So you can see this initial stuff here is just kind of this weave, getting the defense moving, and now it's going to flow into Chicago action, which is going to be this pin down into a handoff, um, and that's going to come right up in here. And so as Minnesota does this, this is going to be, you know, the handoff going into a screen. Mitchell does a good job of turning the corner, getting downhill, and he's going to engage Amori right here on defense. And so as this happens, this means that the low man right here, Jermichael Davis, he has to be able to tag over right here since Amori is now stepping up um, and, and not dropping back with Mitchell right here. And so if he doesn't do that, that means Payne's going to have the roll. If he does, then Mitchell's probably going to kick the Hawkins and Rutgers will have to close out from there. But you can already see right here, he's late on this tag coming over here. Really, really good pass for Mitchell, just kind of threading the needle through Amori, and then Payne gets a bucket. This next play is just going to be another example of Minnesota really being able to get downhill, force Rutgers defense to kind of have to be in rotation, and then get a bucket from there. And so, 10, ten seconds left on the shot clock, uh, just kind of stuff before nothing really came of it. And so Minnesota is going to flow into this empty corner pick and roll. So there's nobody in this strong side corner over here. Christie is going to come off the ball. Rutgers, um, just quickly as we re rewind, they did not ice. And by icing, I mean is where this defender would jump out here and force the ball handler to go this way on the sideline. They don't do that. So now Christie can go middle. Amori again, he's not really, he's pretty much playing at the level. Like he's not in a full drop coverage where he's going to stay back here, um, but he's not full hedging either where he's trying to push the ball handler back, just kind of being at the level of the screen. And so you see him get caught up again. And so what this is going to do is since Christie's able to get this pass, that's going to put Minnesota in a two on one here with Payne Garcia against Mawat Mag here. Uh, Simpson's gonna have to help in, but then that will also leave the open corner. And Payne just honestly, just he had a really, really good game. One of his best games of his career and just a really good finish right there through contact. And so this last play from Pharrell Payne is just going to be him going one on one against one of the best defenders in the entire country and getting a bucket. So nothing really happened so far for Minnesota. Pharrell Payne's going to uh, flash to this elbow area. You see Garcia has position on Jermichael Davis right here for the post up. Um, Payne doesn't really go to it, though. With this size disadvantage uh, that Jamichael Davis has, he's going to stay tight on Garcia. And this is just like Pharrell Payne is just going to work. And this is just a great move. This is the like when we talk about high upside Pharrell Payne, it's, it's stuff like this that really shows what he can do. He's just going to one dribble, get into a little bit of a hop step and go straight up against Amori and finish through him. Like it's not easy to do. Amori is one of the best rim protectors, if not the best rim protector in the entire country. And Pharrell Payne just didn't care and got his. If you are enjoying, please like and subscribe. It was a tale of two halves for the Rutgers offense. In the first half, they averaged 1.321 points per possession. And in the second half, they averaged 0.917. For reference, they averaged 0.961 points per possession on the season. In the first half, they moved the ball well, getting inside and then also working out and knocking down a couple threes. And we'll go through a few plays in the first half first and then how Rutgers, or Minnesota adjusted in the second half. So this is going to be a double screen up top. Um, 77 action is what some people call it. And Amori's going to slip this screen. And so he's just not really gonna make contact and just kind of slip, roll down to the bottom. Rutgers just does a good job. They like This is a good pass ahead from Jeremiah Williams to Derek Simpson in the corner. And Derek Simpson decides to attack the closeout, maintain the advantage and keep Minnesota's defense on the move. And so as that happens, Parker Fox is now right here. He's going to have to come over and help. Elijah Hawkins is kind of caught between Amori and helping in this corner. He's eventually going to kind of shade more towards the corner. And now it's just look where all this room that Amori has. And just because of all the good ball movement, Amori is going to get a good dunk. And the next play is going to eventually be in an Amor Amori post up. Uh, Rutgers, good job here. Kind of moving the ball around, keeping it on the perimeter. Nothing too happened too much though. And now it's just all setting up this Amori post up. And you see Rutgers has spacing along the perimeter on this weak side here. Hawkins is kind of the one digging in here, but he's only like six foot or so. So if he were to help, Amori's going to have more success, you know, going over him than maybe if Garcia helped or something like that. And now it's just one-on-one -on -one against Payne. And, and I mentioned how Payne had a really good game. Amori also had a very good offensive game. 
and this is just good footwork able to get the bucket but the key here is just how much spacing there was and honestly a lot of it is because Rutgers was moving the ball in this game and Minnesota had to just respect them a bit more throughout so this is going to be a good horn set that Rutgers ran against the Minnesota defense just getting a wide open three pretty early in the game and so it's a horn set because you have your two bigs at the elbow area here and then you have a shooter in this corner and then you can't see on screen but there's a shooter in this corner as well so a horn set two two people at the elbows two in the corners ball at the top this is just going to be a normal screen and the key here is that Pharrell Payne is going to be pretty much flat hedging and so he's going to force Jermichael Davis to try to go east west um, but what that happens what that causes is now Garcia who is guarding Mag he's going to have to now take Amori on the roll and so with two Minnesota defenders on the ball here Garcia is going to have to take the roll with Amori that's going to leave this pass to the top of the key wide open as as I've rewind you know Mag is just kind of right here Mag is just going to be slipping to the top of the key and now he's going to get a wide open look from three and he's going to bury it now all those plays happened in the first half and in the second half the Rutgers offense really really slowed down I think Minnesota made a little bit of an adjustment and also just Rutgers fell back to earth a little bit so we're going to look at a defensive play here um, empty side of pick and roll Rutgers passes ahead to Hyatt looking for this slip from Amori and you can already see right so as I kind of rewind Amori is going to slip this screen and they're going to be looking for this and maybe in the first half this would have happened but Hawkins here he's really digging in um, and he's going to live with the skip pass and he's going to take away what's at the rim so now this pass to Amori can't happen Rutgers is going to flow um, into just another pick and roll here Jamichael Davis tries to uh, refuse the screen, get baseline, and again, look where there is a ton of help. Payne's already on Amori. Mitchell, who is guarding uh, Williams right here in this corner, he slides way, way, way over to just stop this dribble drive. And basically, they're just daring Rutgers to try to beat them from three. So ball gets swung back around. Um, nothing. Just again, really, really good defense from Minnesota. Not allowing anything. And now Williams has to take this really, really tough floater. Um, just no real chance of making it. Rutgers does get the ball, but now there's three seconds on the shot clock and Minnesota's just going to be there, force another contest and a miss. So in addition to getting to the rim, Minnesota also shot really well from three, going eight for 16. And we're going to go through a couple plays showing how. This one's very early in the game, right? And, and Payne already has a, a bucket here. He's just going to go into a simple post up and you can already see Derek Simpson right here is way, way, way digging in. Um, I, I don't know if that was by design. I don't think it was, not, at least not to dig in that far. Pico probably wants him closer to like this area right here so that way he can get back but still help a little bit if needed. But you can see he's two full feet in the paint. Jermichael Davis has, you know, he's not going to be able to rotate back to Mitchell right here. So Payne, great pass to Mitchell right here who gets the wide open three. So this next play is just going to be good ball movement for Minnesota that eventually ends in their three. Um, so high ball screen here. Hawkins is going to get downhill. Amori, once again, he is up really at the ball, which forces Mag to have to rotate to Payne on the roll. Hawkins knows this and throws that skip pass uh, to Garcia, just not like on target. If it was, Garcia probably gets a decent look. Really uh, good, good instincts there from Garcia to get um, to Carrington at the top of the key who then immediately attacks. And so he gets downhill and you can just see the ball just continues moving. So now it ends up in pain or in Payne's hands and Austin Williams is going to dig down. And as that happens, Hawkins was, as that as Payne has the ball, Hawkins here is going to be just kind of sliding across the top of the key. And now he's going to get it and hit a pretty important three. And so the final play that we will look at is going to be coming out of Spain pick and roll. And so Spain pick and roll is going to be uh, this ball screen up here and you see Mitchell he's going to be setting a back screen on the screener in this case Payne so he's setting the screen on Amori for Payne to roll now he actually decides to kind of slip this a little bit and that's kind of it, it is what it is that's a variation that they could run from it um, if they didn't run make contact Payne and Mitchell right here honestly would have worked pretty well for probably a three from him but it doesn't and at the end of the day, that doesn't really matter for the rest of this play. Amori kind of at this level, like I've been saying for most of this game. And now he's going to be dropping back a little bit more. But since he is still on the ball and Payne is way out here on this roll, that's going to force uh, the low man once again, Mag, to rotate over and take Payne on this roll. And you can see already with that happening, that's going to leave Garcia open in the corner. Hawkins is one of the best passers in the entire country. So he's going to make this read. He knows that as soon as the low man is, is coming over like this, he knows he's going to have Garcia. 
Uh, with Garcia not being a great three-point shooter, Mag does kind of short close and doesn't really keep the hands up and Garcia makes him pay on this one. This was a game that had a ton of offense in the first half, but Minnesota was the one that was able to sustain it more in the second half, which is impressive against this Rutgers defense. This was Rutgers' first loss with Jeremiah Williams in the lineup as he had nine points on two of 10 shooting. Minnesota has shown that they can be a very competitive team. They're now sitting at seven of seven, seven and seven in conference play. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here to see how Ohio State beat Purdue.